Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another Cricut project. So today we are going to be using the same fall SVGs that I designed. You can grab them for free down below that I used in last week's coaster tutorial, the resin coaster tutorial. And instead we're going to make pillows because you need fall pillows, obviously. And since we had to do orange last week for fall, you're about to kill me. This week we're going back to basics and doing pink cheetah print fall pillows, which kind of makes my heart happy. So if you've never worked with a Cricut before, it's really easy. This is a basic level project. The most, the most hardest, the hardest part is just layering your infusible ink onto one sheet. That's more tedious than it is difficult. So you can do it. I'll show you how. We're going to get started. For this project, I used two pillows because why make one when you can have two? And then they are the infusible ink Cricut blanks because you need your infusible ink to be able to stick to them. So then obviously we needed infusible ink. You need two sheets of black and a set of the distressed berry. And we're going to use the dark berry color and the light pink because, you know, why wouldn't we? Then you're going to need your Cricut. I use my Cricut Maker and an Easy Press. And since these pillows are big, I use my 12 by 10 size Easy Press. That's what's up. Makes life very quick and easy. You don't need transfer tape. You don't need weeding. Infusible ink is super easy to work with. So that's pretty much all you need. And we're going to jump right in. Let's get started. Okay y'all, so first things first, this is the Distress Berry, and we're just gonna go ahead and open it. It's this infusible ink. It is ink, like it's in a transfer sheet, but it's ink y'all. So it comes in these black bags to protect it from the sun. When you're not using it, you want to keep it in that black bag. But for now, we'll go ahead and pull it all apart. We're gonna use this dark berry color and a light pink. Perfect, clean all that up. And we're gonna go ahead and put these bad boys on our cutting mats. So for this project, I'm using a strong grip mat, which is the purple. You want to use clean, dry hands, okay? Like don't get water or moisture or Diet Coke condensation. <laughs> Been there, done that. Don't get it on the infusible ink. There you go. These are 12 by 12 sheets, so they fit perfectly on your cutting mat like if you need to cut it down you can but I tend to just put the entire sheet on your cutting mat and then cut off the excess later perfect smooth it out make sure there's no bubbles it doesn't cut perfectly over bubbles so smooth it all the way out and you're good to go each of them on their own cutting mat that way we can just feed them both straight into the machine one after the other since we're doing two pillows, you also need two sheets of black infusible ink, and I've loaded those off camera onto their own cutting mats. As you can see, we're using a standard fine, fine tip blade, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So if you've uploaded your SVGs, they're already pre-color coordinated. You just have to kind of weld i wanted to say warp you have to weld all the light colors together and then you can click make it and it will start cutting so for this light pink color it is cutting out every other slice of our cheetah print pumpkin and then it will cut out every other slice of our dark berry so that all in all we have all of the colored inserts for our pieces so since this particular project, we're doing two different colors and two different designs for two different pillows, say it a million times fast, two, 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 um, that's okay. We're doing one big pumpkin and one little pumpkin as part of the second design, and they both fit on one sheet. So you don't need to load separate colors multiple times, just one distressed berry in the dark color and one in the light pink and it will cut out the parts for both pumpkins on one sheet which is quite useful 
because otherwise you have to fit them together. It just kind of puts them on the sheet for you and you can see it's cutting out the big pumpkin on the left and the little tiny pumpkin on the right. <laughs> uh, all right, and I don't add any extra pressure or anything. I just cut this out using the infusible ink transfer sheet, the recommended guide for my maker, and I don't click extra pressure or less pressure. I just use the default and you can see it cuts through perfectly. I have clean lines. It's really easy to weed. I don't have any problems. Perfect. Unload that one. Here's the big pumpkin. Okay, so there's left. Here's the middle and the right and then it has the baby. So in order to take this guy off, you're gonna flip your cutting mat over and you wanna peel the cutting mat away from your infusible ink. So that way you can avoid rolling the infusible ink and curling it up as much as possible. Just make sure when you put your infusible ink sheet down, you're putting it down face first on a clean dry surface because if you put it down on any kind of moisture, you're gonna mess up that ink. All right, so now we're gonna do the black. This is the exact same thing. It's gonna go ahead and cut out our design. So I believe this is the welcome to our patch design that we're doing for one of the pillows. So it's gonna cut out all of those words as well as the two little pumpkins. Well, this design has one pumpkin. And then it will cut out our second big cheetah print pumpkin on the second sheet of black. And of course, if you haven't noticed, I have sped up all of the Cricut machine work for the Distressed Berry, for the light pink, and for the black, so that y'all don't have to watch it um, in slow motion. This is not real time. This is like pretty fast. If you have also noticed a orange fuzzball in the top left corner, that is my cat, Lily. She loves it when I do Cricut projects instead of resin because she's not locked in the house. She gets to actually hang out with me and she just lays on my little backdrop and soaks up the sun and is so happy. So you may see her little legs throughout this entire video because she would not stay out of the frame. It's okay. I just like that she hangs out with me. I just wish she'd hang out a little more to the left. <laughs> All right, it is almost over. Maybe I didn't speed the black one up. No, I just think there's more cuts. All right, so here we go. Ready? Welcome to our patch. And there's the little pumpkin. There's your first look at that little pumpkin and how intricate it is. So it's not too hard to splice together, but it's definitely not as easy as the big one. So like I was saying, infusible ink can only be heated once. So instead of putting down distressed berry, heating it up, putting down pink, heating it up, putting down black, heating it up, you have to layer all three colors onto one transfer sheet and then heat it up all at once, which sounds complicated, but I will show you how it's done. It's really not hard. It's just tedious, which is our word of the day. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut off that excess because we can use all of that black on the bottom for a different project. We don't need to waste it. <laughs> Those little cat paws, guys. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry, she gets me every time. All right, we're gonna cake that off and then we're not gonna use a weeding tool. It's a little too sharp for the infusible ink, but infusible ink is thick, kind of like cardstock. And so we're just gonna get a corner and then we'll use our fingers. It's really easy. So you're just gonna start pulling it up and you just wanna watch that way once you've peeled some up it's not like vinyl where it tries to lay back down on itself, but you don't want it to try to restick itself back to the transfer sheet. But as you can see, for the most part, once you've peeled it up, it stays kind of curled up. 
All right, so we're just going to take all the infusible ink out of all the negative spaces. And unless you're in, like with this Jeb, you those little weird areas where there's edges, it comes up pretty easily. And it comes up easily there too. It just wants to tear. And I don't necessarily want it to tear and ruin the design. All right. I've also decided at this point that the sticky carrier sheet of this piece is just getting stuck in that fur. So we're going to put it on a cutting mat. Well, an easy press mat. Same thing. All right, let's get in between that little pumpkin stem. The curly cue is so cute, but it's a little hard to weed. It's worth it, though, y'all. It's what my mom always says, right? Beauty is pain. I think she meant like when she was brushing my hair, but I'm pretty sure it applies to cricket weeding as well. Maybe that's just me. All right. I feel like I should have sped this up, but I wanted you guys to see exactly how it works. Like in real time. It is really just being careful more than anything there we go all right once you kind of get into the the middle of it here it's not nearly as hard we did tear it there but we tore it right across the edge of that negative space which is fine you just don't want to tear the parts you need because <laughs> obviously that would be bad and sometimes if it's easier to actually tear the negative space, like what you've already taken off, like tear it off, then do that. But in this case, it, it wasn't bugging me enough to do that. All right, here we go. There we are. See, it goes pretty quick at the end there. So now we're just going to go in and take out the middle of all those O's and the middle of the T, any of those little spots, you know, in between the R. <sighs> Let all that pretty script work come out. And then we will have to do the big daddy, which is that teeny tiny little pumpkin. It has quite a bit of negative space. But don't worry, I, I don't make you sit through that. All right. Are we done yet? <laughs> had to. I just had to. Now we're going to go back and get those little spaces where I had ripped the bottom off ends up being I think like the bottom of the L or something no the bottom of the M the M has those big loops so we don't need that negative space in there I'm going to do the O's and that will be the end of the words perfect and now dun dun dun, dun the pumpkin Sorry, y'all. Had to pet my cat. Well, I thought I sped through the pumpkin, but maybe I don't remember. Let's just watch the video, guys. We'll find out what happens. All right, so we're going to take out all the negative areas. Now, when you layer the distressed berry and the pink, Basically what we're taking out right now, there we go, what we took out right there, that's where we're going to add our colors in, okay? So I'm going to show you on the big pumpkin, it's the exact same pumpkin, so you'll do the same thing for the little design. So here is that left side, and you're going to carefully peel the backing, the carrier sheet, off of the pink, and then you're going to add it in. And it will stick to that transfer sheet, the backing carrier sheet, I guess, not transfer sheet, since the carrier sheet is sticky. 
Just make sure when you're peeling it off, the main thing to keep in mind is that if you peel too fast, it will come off, but it also might tear your infusible ink. So slow and steady. And then it fits like right in there. So get it lined up. And once you get it lined up and start pushing it down, it goes right in place. See, you don't even really have to line up the rest of it. You just got to push it down. Perfect. And also, just FYI, those little marks on my cutting easy press mat, heat press mat, are because I had my heat press easy press on top of it for storage. And it's heavy and it left marks. It's okay. They come out when I heat press it, but still driving me nuts. All right, so we're going to do that for all five sections. And for the most part, the areas are pretty big and go down pretty easily. Like you saw in that left piece, there is that little piece at the top. There's a few of those that are just little areas that you have to do. But other than that, they're big areas and they go down pretty easy. So now we're going to do the little tiny piece at the bottom. And then we'll do the middle. Perfect. I'm just going to make sure it's all stuck down really good. We'll do the middle area. There's that little piece in the middle. And so see, these little pieces are still like about the size of the tip of your finger. They're, they're pretty big for little pieces. But when you do that little pumpkin on the welcome to our patch portion, they're like very small. So it's possible. I did it. It's just you have to be very careful not to drop them and to put them right side up. So just go slow and be careful. It's not impossible. It's not hard. It's just tedious. Perfect. Now to the right. We're almost done. We're like, what, three three-fifths of the way done. Is that what we're going to call it? Here's the other light pink. I just love that distressed berry. I know, I know, I know. It's not orange, but I think that distressed berry, which is what Cricut calls it, it's like a dark raspberry color. I think that is a very fall color. Like, that's like autumn leaves changing. Now, the light pink is just because I like light pink. And of the three other colors in the package, I thought it would contrast the best with the distressed berry. So that's what I picked. But you do you. Get some orange. Get some red. Get some yellow. I'm not doing that. I just love how these, these darker colors and lighter colors of the pinks go together. All right. Now we're done. Perfect. Now we're going to move on to the little pumpkin. We're going to add the little tiny pieces in and we'll be good to go. So now it's time for the heat press. Easy press. I don't know why I keep calling it a heat press. Go ahead and open your pillow. And since they very nicely packaged it for us in quarters, we're going to have to unfold it and cut all the little pieces off that are holding it folded and then use our easy press to kind of iron out those seams a little bit. It'll get even more ironed out when we actually apply the decals, but for now, we're just gonna do it a little bit. So go ahead and heat up your easy press. For infusible ink, you want to heat it up to 380 for 40 seconds. So I don't necessarily wait for it to heat all the way up, to iron out the seams. I waited till it got to about 150, 200, and then started ironing the seams. You're also going to use this time to just preheat your material, which is always good practice when doing infusible ink or iron on or HTV or anything with your easy press. Perfect. Preheated. So now just going to do the other side real quick. And you don't have to preheat both sides, especially if you're not putting something on both sides. But I just, I do find 
that it's easier, you get better results, if you preheat both sides of your material, and in this case, if you iron out those seams a little bit so that your pieces don't have to go over those bumps. Let's do the big pumpkin. All right, so we're going to put it down. That carrier sheet that it's on has grids so we can line it up real easy. It also is sticky, so you can definitely just push it down and it will hold itself in place. But infusible ink, when it's heated up, like it needs to stay still, like 100% still, like a soldier outside of the palace in London still, not like your toddler being promised a Snickers bar still okay so like still and so instead of just putting it down with the carrier sheet you're gonna put a little bit of heat transfer tape and this is resistant to heat not like regular washi or scotch tape so it's safe to use with your easy press this is the Cricut brand so I mean it works with Cricut you're just gonna put some down on all the edges that you think you might need, I recommend at least the four corners or the top and the bottom and the sides, like however you wanna divvy that up. In this case, I did the middle since most of our design up there is in the middle. And then I'm gonna do the two sides as well just to make sure everything is in place. If you don't do this and your design does move a little bit, you're just gonna get a little bit of a shadow or a haze instead of those crisp, clean lines that we want. So it is possible to do it without the heat resistant tape, but you have to be so much more careful and it's not worth it. So now we're going to gently place our easy press down, put it straight down, don't wiggle it, remember, still as a soldier outside of the palace in London okay so place it straight down press that button wait your 40 seconds and then lift it straight up careful not to disturb it perfect oh see when they pop up like that that means the ink has transferred that is good but it's hot so if you touch it like you're gonna burn yourself so instead we're just gonna move it off to the side we're gonna do our other pillow while it cools so if you don't have two giant easy press mats just wait for the first one to cool but i do so we're just going to go ahead and do the second one you just want don't want to move that infusible ink sheet until it's fully fully cool to the touch all right so welcome to our patch this one has much thinner words than the big pumpkin so that means it has way more carrier sheet to stick down which is good i'm going to go ahead and use my brayer in this case just to kind of stick it down your hand works but the brayer works a little better so yeah perfect smooth it down all the way across that gives it a good contact and now put your heat resistant tape on the corners because it's basically the whole area and then it's easy press time put it straight down 60 seconds I thought it was 40 do 60 y'all be safe I'll look it up I'm pretty sure it's 60 because I looked it up before I did this project 40 seconds must just be my attention span all right so when this is done we are going to give it plenty of time to cool typically it takes about a minute or two although you can wait longer than that you can peel it up sooner like it's not going to necessarily hurt the piece but it it can hurt your fingers when it's really really hot so typically a minute or two 60 seconds <laughs> is long enough to let it cool so that you don't burn your fingers and um then you can actually take the transfer off so now we're at the end we're going to go ahead and pick up that easy press and then we will reveal the final design so excited i mean i know what it looks like but it's just so pretty all right so let's move that off our thing and remove the carrier sheet Oh, it's so pretty. 
Okay, so on this one, it is a little um, light in places. That was just the pillow was a little funny. See how much darker it is on this one. I love it either way. All right, y'all. Did you love it? Was it as easy as I said it was? Because, you know, life. Here's the first one. Welcome to our patch. Oh, I love it. Even the little pumpkin that was the hardest to like splice together turned out so cute. And as hard as it was to splice together, like I said, it wasn't hard. It was just tedious. It's just a lot of little pieces. Can we talk about this big cheetah print pumpkin and how I think we need to have pumpkins year round so that I never have to put this away? I'm obsessed. Okay, so I'm going to put those away so that I don't scare you guys because I love them. Also, can we just talk about the pillow inserts for a second? Like, that's not part of the tutorial, but I ordered these two pillow inserts to go inside these off Amazon, and they came shrink-wrapped, and you cut them open, and they just fluff up. They were like $14 for two. That's like $7 a pillow. But I'm serious. Like, I think all pillows need to be shrink-wrapped and fluff up now because that was amazing. And I need to order more Cricut blanks so that I can make more pillows and have more reasons to have fluff up pillows. All right. If you liked this tutorial, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, do a dance, have a donut, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go make something else. Bye, y'all.